Well, hey there, I'm Jay. Welcome to my booth. I got another behind the scenes peek for you on another book that I just wrapped on called The Russian. It's the second installment of the Lance Spector series, a cool number of books by the wonderful author Saul Herzog. This passage in particular, I just thought was uh, pretty cool. So I thought I would share it with you and talk about what into what went into making it. Before I dive in, if you have any questions about this, anything voiceover related, please feel free to drop me a line below or reach out on my website. And if you'd like some coaching, that's available on my website as well, if you want to check that out. Additionally, if you think this stuff is cool or helpful and you think others would as well, doing the YouTube button clicking helps other folks find it and expand our little community here. So it's appreciated. Let's read this passage. <clears throat> There's no use running, he called out. She dropped behind the wall as two bullets hit the cinder block, sending chips of concrete flying. She was on a narrow pathway through the brush. It went in both directions, but she knew she'd never outrun the man barefoot. Across the path was a fence, and she began to climb it. Her feet were numb with cold. Her hands were beginning to shake. The initial burst of adrenaline was wearing off. As she struggled to the top of the fence, she knew she wouldn't make it over in time. The assassin would peer over the cinder block wall any second, and when he did, she'd be a sitting duck. That knowledge made her panic. She lost her grip on the fence and her foot slipped. Some loose wire cut a deep gash in her ankle. She kept climbing, desperately pulling herself up the fence, and just as she swung her leg over the top, she heard the voice of the assassin behind her. Don't move, he said. She froze. She could leap down the other side of the fence, but he'd simply pull the trigger the instant she moved. The chase was over. No one escaped the clutches of the GRU. It was impossible. The organization put more effort into tracking down and killing its own defectors than it did pursuing foreign agents. What had she been thinking? The moment she betrayed the agency, she'd signed her own death warrant. Her mind grasped desperately for options. She knew he was going to kill her. Whether she ran or not made no difference. He hadn't been sent to bring her back alive. She turned to look at him. He wasn't a man she recognized. He pulled himself onto the wall and was sitting on it. Who sent you? She said. You know who sent me. Who are you? Does that make a difference? I guess not, she said. My name is Gennady Surkov, he said. He was scarcely twelve feet from her, and she could see his face clearly. He looked back at her, her body barely covered at all under the t-shirt. She was shaking so vigorously now that she felt she might lose her grip and fall from the fence. You're GRU, aren't you? He said. Until a few days ago, she said. What happened a few days ago? I killed my boss. He nodded. Igor Erlov, I heard about that. They're saying it was a robbery. Tatiana said. I knew it wasn't a robbery. Well, now you can say you killed the woman who killed Erlov. Gennady nodded. It's a shame I have to do it, he said. You look so lovely in the moonlight. Just get it over with, Tatiana said. She shut her eyes, held her breath, and braced herself. The bullet rang out with the clean, crisp snap of a breaking tree branch. She felt nothing. She waited. She knew what a bullet felt like, but nothing happened. All she felt was the icy numbness of her feet and hands and the bitter cold of the breeze. She opened her eyes. The assassin was on the ground. He'd fallen from the wall and blood spurted from his right arm in steady gushes. He writhed on the ground and Tatiana looked around frantically to see who'd shot him. In the darkness beyond the wall, she saw no one. Gennady was still on the ground, his gun three feet away from him. She looked at it, then back at him. He hadn't seen it yet, but if she moved for it, he would. 
She leapt from the fence, falling into the heavy brush on the other side, and rolled down another twenty feet of slope. The ground was steep, and she lost control as she fell, crashing through leaves and branches until her head hit something hard, and everything went black. So it's a tense passage, and it's a chase scene, and with any chase scene that you've either seen on film, TV, or you've read in books, uh, good ones, I think, they have a sort of pulsing to them. They're not just 100% full bore the whole way, and they're also not um, leaving long stretches of anything uh, that lose the sort of tension. And I think that this is a good example of that, where there are moments where we think that she maybe has gotten away, she's turned a corner, maybe that she can get over this fence and get away. Uh, and she's constantly evaluating certain things and making split-second decisions. And the culmination of that sort of pacing, the rush and then catching your breath, and then the rush again, is, this, is the sort of life-and-death showdown where she's atop the fence, the assassin is seated on the uh, concrete barrier right next to her, and they're having essentially just a pragmatic conversation about, well, I guess this is it, isn't it? And uh, what I love about that is that then it turns again and she is afforded the opportunity to get away and we re-enter back into this rushing thing um, even after there's been that brief pause and you're sort of baited and switched in that instance. The other thing that I really like about this is just Tatiana as a character. She's uh, really cool. Um, as you get to know her both in this book and in the previous book, She's got a lot of uh, emotional undertone that both by the nature of her job and uh, what she's essentially needs to do for her job, she's got this rich emotional undertone that she essentially has to just ice over to get by. And um, I don't know that that happens in this instance, but there are other moments in the book where uh, she is afforded a bit of vulnerability. And uh, in this instance, she's literally physically vulnerable to the elements and this man who's chasing her down to kill her. So she ices over and is just like, can you shut up and just kill me, man? I took out this other guy, now you're here, and it's just the way that things roll. So I think it's a really cool way for her to go through this scenario at the very least. Anyway, I hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you have any questions about it or thoughts, let me know down below. And until the next one, be well, and I'll see you there. Toodles.